Good afternoon and welcome to our daily devotions where we are looking at the women of the Bible. This Holy Week we are reflecting on Mary Magdalene. This is part one of four where we take a look at her story, her character. Though mistakenly characterised as a prostitute in many popular writings, the Bible says only that Mary was possessed by seven demons. She probably suffered a serious mental or physical illness from which Jesus delivered her. She is a beautiful example of a woman whose life has poured out in response to God's extravagant grace. Her sorrow to watch Jesus' agony at Calvary. Her joy to have been the first witness to Jesus' resurrection. Key scriptures, Matthew 27 verse 56. 61, 28 verse 1, Mark 15, 40, 47, 16 verse 1 to 19, Luke 8, 2, 24, 10, John 19, 25, 21 to 18. Her story. She made her way through the shadows to the garden tomb, grateful for the darkness that shrouded her tears. How, she wondered, could the world go on as though nothing at all had happened? How could the mountains keep from crashing down, the sky resist falling? Had everyone but her lost their minds? Had no one noticed that the world had collapsed two days ago? For the past three years she had followed the rabbi across Galilee and Judea, providing for him out of her own small purse, she had loved his hearty laughter and the smile that flashed across his face whenever he saw her. Wherever they went, she felt privileged to tell her story, grateful to be among his growing band of followers. She had grown up in Magdala, a prosperous town on the west bank of the Sea of Galilee, but she had not prospered. How could a woman thrive when she was filled with demons who controlled her mind? Though she had begged for mercy, no mercy had been given. Instead, her delusions locked her in a nightmare world, isolating her even from small pleasures and simple kindnesses. But then Jesus had come, like no rabbi she had ever encountered. He seemed neither afraid nor repulsed by her illness. Mary, he had called to her, as though he had known her all her life, Despite the heat, she shivered as he drew near, her stomach suddenly queasy. Though she backed away, she could feel a great light advancing towards her, forcing the darkness away. Suddenly, her familiar companions were themselves begging mercy, but no mercy was given. Mary Magdalene, a woman possessed by seven demons, was restored to her right mind her bondage a thing of the past, eyes that had once been whole swallowing the light now shone like pools reflecting the sun. Since then everyone in Magdala had marvelled at the change in her. How could Mary not love such a man? How could she not want to do everything for him? She thought she was living in heaven to be close to Jesus, to witness healing after healing to be stirred, surprised and refreshed by his teaching. This indeed was joy to a woman unaccustomed to joy. But Jesus had his share of enemies. She knew religious leaders in Jerusalem had been stung by his truth-telling, offended by his galling lack of diplomacy. Still, every trap they laid for him had failed until now. How suddenly they had struck even though Jerusalem was crowded with pilgrims for Passover, the temple guard had arrested him at night and then turned him over to the Roman authorities, who mocked and whipped him nearly to death. The rabbi from Galilee, who had promised the poor in spirit they would surely inherit the kingdom of heaven, was now in chains. His hunger and thirst for righteousness had left him full, but empty and broken. Unblessed, he had become a curse, his body hanging naked on a Roman cross. 
Mary had done her best to fight off the shadows that crowded near again as she waited through the awful hours of his agony, unable to look at the spectacle before her, yet unable to turn away. Whatever his suffering, she needed to be near him. When it was over, she had watched Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea unfasten his body from the cross. Gently, they had wrapped him in myrrh and aloe, enough for a king's burial. Finally, as the stone rolled across the tomb, sealing it shut, she had turned away. After the Sabbath was over, on the next day, Mary purchased yet more spices. Before the sun came up on Sunday, she approached the tomb. How on earth, she wondered, could she roll away the massive stone? But to her surprise, the mouth of the tomb lay wide open. Strips of linen were lying on the floor, and the burial cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head was folded up by itself. What had they done with his body, she wondered. To be cheated of this last chance of touching him and caring for him was more than she could bear. She stood outside the tomb weeping. Then bending over, she looked inside. Two creatures in white sat on the stony shelf where the body had been laid. Woman, why are you crying? they asked. They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. Then she turned and saw a man studying her. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Mistaking him for the gardener, she pleaded, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Mary, he said. Startled, she cried out, Rabboni, meaning teacher. By now the sun had risen. With it fled the darkness that had pursued her ever since she had heard the news of his arrest. Jesus, the one who had raised her from a living death, had himself risen from the dead. Mary fell to the ground in awe, remembering the words of the prophet Isaiah. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. The garden that had so recently been a place of shadows and gloom now seemed green and bright, as though paradise itself had broken through. The risen Jesus had appeared, not to rulers and kings, nor even first of all to his male disciples, but to a woman whose love had held her at the cross and led her to the grave. Mary Magdalene, a person who had been afflicted by demons, whose testimony would not have held up in court because she was a woman, was the first witness of the resurrection. Once again, God had revealed himself to the lowly, and it would only be the humble whose hearing was sharp enough to perceive the message of his love. Thank you for listening. I don't believe in coincidences, but we are following the chronicle order of the book and this week we fall upon Mary Magdalene this holy week and I know that is a God incidence because Mary Magdalene's story goes through the crucifixion and goes through the resurrection as she was one of the first women to notify to, to notice that Jesus was alive she was one of the first women that Jesus appeared to after the resurrection and to hear her story from where she came from how Jesus healed her and how she loved Jesus and how she honored him loyal to him seek him learnt from him all his teachings for him to then reveal himself to the type of woman that she was, to a woman in general, because in those days, women weren't seen to be of any essence or of any importance in those days. They were not held in any high esteem. So for Jesus to reveal himself to a woman, let alone, <clears throat> excuse me, let alone a woman like Mary Magdalene. It just shows how 
is a testament to how Jesus loves everyone, despite our sins, despite what we have done. And it's a message that he sends throughout the Bible because he chooses the least. He chooses the lowly. He chooses the people that people would least expect. So may we be encouraged by Mary Magdalene today. Despite all what she had been through. She loved Jesus. Jesus loved her, healed her and showed how he could still use her, showed how he still loved her, showed how he still cared, showed despite what she had done, that Jesus was still going to be there for her. And putting her in that position to be the first person he appeared to, he knew that her story would be told. So let us be encouraged by Mary. Don't worry about what we have done in the past. Think about how we move forward. Think about our relationship with Jesus. Think about how we can learn from him just as Mary did. Think about how we can receive from him just as Mary did. Think about how we could be delivered from him just as Mary was. And really seek Jesus this Holy Week. Seek the depth of his love for you and me. That very specific love, that very individual, personal love. Think about how Jesus can work in your life. Draw on that relationship with him, grow deeper in that love and you will see the blessings and you will receive a new life a new way of thinking. Join me tomorrow as we take a look at her life and times with a specific focus of the women in Jesus's ministry. Stay safe, keep praying and God bless. This is part two of four where we take a look at her life and times with a specific focus on women in Jesus' life and ministry. Cooking, caring for family members, spinning, weaving, sewing, baking bread, cleaning, all of these were common tasks for the women in New Testament times. Most women spent the majority of their time and energy within their homes, caring for their families. But several women stepped outside the cultural expectations of their time to play a significant role in the ministry of Jesus. Only the twelve disciples are mentioned more often than certain women, Mary Magdalene being one of them. Mary tells us that a number of women followed him and cared for his needs in Mark 15.41. During the years of Jesus' ministry, when he and his disciples weren't earning an income, several women stepped in to care for them. They used their own financial resources to support Jesus and his disciples. That's Luke 8 to verse 3. While Jesus was teaching and healing, these women probably spent their time purchasing food, preparing it and serving it. Perhaps they also found homes for Jesus and his disciples to stay in while on their travels. These particular women probably either didn't have children or had children who were grown, so their responsibilities at home were decreased and they could instead provide for the needs of Jesus and his disciples. Two women in Bethany, Mary and Martha, always generously opened their home to Jesus when he was in their town, providing meals and a place to rest. That's Luke 10, verse 38. Jesus was close enough to these women and their brother, Lazarus, that he called them his friends in John 11, verse 11. The most significant woman in Jesus' life was, of course, Mary, his mother. She remained in the background during his years of public ministry. Jesus' gentle care of her when he was hanging out on the cross reveals a son's love, a son's true love for his mother. Women watched Jesus suffer on the cross, remaining there until he had breathed his last and was buried. Women were the first 
to go to the tomb on Sunday morning and the first to witness his resurrection. Luke's gospel in particular portrays Jesus as someone who both understood and respected women, conferring on them a stature that most of them had not previously enjoyed. Jesus' dealings with women throughout the Gospels gives all of us, men and women alike, a model to follow as we consider the status and treatment of the women with whom we come into contact every day. We will now listen to Mark 15 verses 33 to 41. The death of Jesus. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Then, at three o'clock, Jesus called out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Some of the bystanders misunderstood and thought he was calling for the prophet Elijah. One of them ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, holding it up to him on a reed stick so he could drink. Wait, he said, let's see whether Elijah comes to take him down. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the Roman officer who stood facing him saw how he had died, he exclaimed, This man truly was the Son of God. Some women were there watching from a distance, including Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, the younger, and of Joseph, and Salome. They had been followers of Jesus and had cared for him while he was in Galilee. Many other women who had come with him to Jerusalem were also there. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now reflect on the following three questions. Number one, what do you think Mary Magdalene thought the thought and felt as she heard Jesus cry out to God? Two, how might she have reacted when she saw him dead? Three, why do you think she went to the cross to watch him die? Why not spare herself that? Thank you for listening. Now, when the Bible was written, if we think about the context it was written in, women were never put up front, were never put at the forefront. But as we've seen over the weeks, and it's nearly a year, I can't believe this, it's nearly a year that we're going through um, the women of the Bible. This is our 49th women, which would mean 49 weeks. So it's nearly a year we've been covering the women of the Bible. And we've been seeing how they can have a message, how they have encouraged us. We've seen the work that they've done, how God used women throughout the Bible. And we could get so many good examples. Now, if we think about the context in which the Bible was written, these women would not have been written in as full a light as they probably would today. So we have to take stock of that and take note of that. But in the Bible, when Jesus talks about the women in ministry and we look at how he used them, we've gone through each of the women. If you look at how he's used the women to effect change, to support others, to prophesy, to heal, all the examples that he has given of how he used women in his ministry, we can take note of. And it's a great encouragement to me and I hope that it's a great encouragement to you. And this week, as we look on Mary Magdalene, as I said yesterday, we look on where she came from to the person that she was when Jesus died. She was a changed woman, a changed woman, a complete transformation. And that is what Jesus can do in our lives. Transform us, shape and mould us into the person that he created us to be, regardless of what we have done 
in the past. All we have to do is let go and allow God to work in our lives, surrender to him, confess and repent our sins and love him. Love him and only him. Love our neighbours as ourselves, but put God first. So this Holy Week, again, seek God. Seek God about the ways he loves you personally. And ask, ask God to show you the ways in which he loves you, the depths of it. I don't think our human, I always say this, but I don't think our human brain can understand or comprehend the depth of a love it would take for you to send your son to die for us. I don't think that we can comprehend the depth of love it would take for that type of sacrifice. But I pray that the Holy Spirit will show me, show me the depth of love it takes during this Holy Week, the depth of love it takes to be able to sacrifice yourself in that way for me and you for our sins so that we could have eternal life, so that this isn't it, so that our life doesn't end here, so that we can be with him in paradise and live eternally whole and full lives with him amen amen please join me tomorrow as we take a look at her promise stay safe keep praying and god bless part three of four where we take a look at her promise jesus not only knew mary's name he knew everything about her he remembered the day he had cast the demons out of her he remembered her many practical kindnesses. He saw how she suffered with him as she watched him die on the cross. Just as Jesus knew the intimate details of Mary's life, he knows about you. When you are tempted to lose hope, when life seems too empty to go on, when grief overwhelms you, Jesus cares. When those you love have let you down, when you think you, do, you can't go on, for another minute. When your problems crush you, Jesus cares. He calls your name just as he called Mary's and you too can go on like the women who went from the tomb, perhaps still a bit afraid yet filled with joy. That's Matthew 28 verse 8. Some promises in scripture. Isaiah 43 verse 1. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. Matthew ten twenty nine, verse 31. Are not two sparrows sowed for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground apart from the will of your father. And even the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. Romans 8.39 Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 cast, your, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. We will now listen to John 20 verses 1 to 16.
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now reflect on the following three questions. Number one, why do you suppose Mary didn't recognise Jesus until he spoke her name? Number two, how sure are you that Jesus knows your name? Number three, how would you compare your love for Jesus to Mary's? And what feeds or dampens your love for him? Thank you for listening. So many promises there in scripture, I hope, encourage you that God is always there. That just as he called Mary's name, he is calling your name. He is calling your name. It doesn't matter what we have done. Jesus is always there. He cares. He sent, He came down to earth and experienced human life. So he understands, he can relate, he knows the feelings that we are going through when we're feeling low, when we're feeling depressed, when we're feeling grief stricken, when we're feeling that there's no hope, when we're feeling that, you know, life is too difficult, when we're feeling the stress and the strains of life. He can relate, he understands as he came down as a human on earth and experienced what we feel. He understands and he cares. And so many promises in scripture that allude to us just having a relationship with him, placing it all in his hands, placing it all at the foot of the cross. That is why he sacrificed himself on that cross. So we don't have to suffer. So we could have eternal life. We can do it today. Surrender ourselves to him. Lay all at the cross. It doesn't matter what we have done. Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for the sins that we have done. He has already paid the price for us. All we have to do is turn to him. So be encouraged today. Be encouraged by Mary Magdalene. Turn to him. Allow him to heal our hearts, to heal our souls to heal our minds so that we don't have to be held in bondage, held in affliction, held in fear. Because we are free. He can break those chains, break those strongholds that we have. Allow God to transform us, just as he did Mary, transform our lives and live a new day, free of all the cares and the worries and the burdens because we know the God who we serve and we know what he has done for us and we know he has already won the victory and we know he cares, he loves and he cares. Join me tomorrow as we take a look at her legacy of prayer. Stay safe, keep praying and God bless. This is part four of four, where we take a look at her legacy of prayer. John 20 verse 16 reads, Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. We can reflect on John 20 verses 1 to 18. We can praise God that the Father has revealed his love so powerfully in Jesus. We can offer thanks for the death and resurrection of Jesus, his Son and our Saviour. We can confess your doubts about God's power or willingness to deliver you from some evil in your life. And we could ask God for the grace of deliverance. Ways in which we can lift our heart. One day this week, set your alarm clock so that you wake up a half an hour before dawn. 
Find a spot where you can watch the sunrise in the early morning shadows. Tell God about some area of darkness in your own life or in the life of someone you love. Perhaps it's an illness, a persistent sin, loneliness, a troubled marriage, an addiction or a wayward child. Whatever it is, surrender it by imagining yourself, placing it in the garden tomb next to the body of Jesus. As the sun rises, meditate on that first Easter morning and remember that when Jesus walked out of the tomb, you walked out with him. Ask God for the faith to wait and watch for his delivering power. Lord, Make me a person like Mary Magdalene, who follows you not because of a legalistic understanding of her faith, but because of an overwhelming sense of gratitude and love for your own extravagant grace. Help me surrender my darkness to you and flood me with the light of your presence. Amen. Thank you for joining me this Good Friday. Good Friday. The day that Jesus sacrificed himself on that cross. Something he didn't have to do, something he could have got out of very easily. But he obeyed his father and did it for us to allow us to have eternal life. I pray this week, as you turned to Jesus, you were able to get a glimpse of the depth of the love it would take for you to send your son to be sacrificed in that way. That that God loved you so much that he sent his only son. Thank you for joining me this week as we reflected on Mary. Mary who was close to Jesus, Mary who loved Jesus, Mary who was healed by Jesus and was one of the first people that um, Jesus revealed himself to after he rose again. May you continue to grow in your relationship with Jesus so that you could experience that depth of love at a deeper level within your life and be transformed. Be transformed. Thank you for listening. Have a good weekend. Enjoy Easter Sunday where we celebrate, truly celebrate the resurrection where Jesus conquered death and paid the price, won the victory just so that you and me could have eternal life. May we acknowledge the depth of love it would take and the depth of love that Jesus has especially for you. Stay safe, keep praying, and God bless.